Huh? Oh! Was I doing the thing again? <sighs> Staring into the flames, lost in thought. Sorry, dear. I'm already easily distracted. Put a log on the fire and suddenly I turn into a moth. Well, not literally. It would be pretty embarrassing if you had to stomp me out. <laughs> right. Painful, too. Of course. <laughs> How about this? Instead, I'll get lost in your eyes. And turning to face you keeps the glare off of my glasses. See? I'm clever. <sighs> Me? No. You're the cute one, Sunflower. <sighs> I was just thinking about you. Well, I was thinking that even in the cold of winter, my sunflower still stands so tall in my heart. And now, with your gaze set upon me, as if I were the sun itself, I, uh... <laughs> I don't mean to start waxing poetic. I just don't know if... I don't know if I've ever felt that way to be adored the way that the flowers and the trees adore the rays of sunshine, to be needed, to be needed. And what a blessing it is to be loved by a beauty like you in a world like this. When I'm by your side, I'm removed from all of my worries, all of my doubts, from the stress of putting together so many damned holiday arrangements. <laughs> oh, please, celebrating Yule with you is a gift in itself. Thank you for being here with me. <sighs> well, I'm still a bit cold, but... You always know how to warm me up. Mm. <laughs> well, I meant the way that you make my heart race tends to raise my body temperature, but a kiss is certainly one way to make me burn even brighter for you, my love. I'm not too much, am I? The season always gets me feeling... feelings. If your stomach churns at all of my romantic babbling, I can pull back a bit. Can't have you falling ill tonight. <laughs> You're sure? <sighs> Lucky me, then. If you love me just the way I am, I suppose I'll simply have to serenade you even more with all of these sweet utterances, or whatever big word fits nicely there. <laughs> well, there's a notable difference between being well-spoken and being a poet, and I wouldn't even consider myself all that well-spoken, not by well, speaking standards. See? Proved my point. So long as you enjoy suffering my company, I'm perfectly happy. <sighs> well, I suppose you also need to not be freezing cold out here. Are you comfortable? Mostly. Mm-hmm. Well, you said it like... 
You had a specific solution in mind to make it just right? The way you tend to when you have something devious in mind. <laughs> okay, maybe devious paints you in too mischievous a light. But you know what I mean. Oh. Innocent. Of course. You've never been anything but. I didn't mean to imply. Let me guess. You'd like me to hold you by the fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. Only if it's not a bother. <laughs> Holding you could never be a bother. Come here. <sighs> there we go. Almost perfect. What could I be missing? <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd call it rambling. More like... Educated banter. You want to know about you? <laughs> I'm worried I might retread whatever I've rambled about in the past, but... Um, oh... Educated bantered about in the past. <laughs> mm. Well, if it would warm those chilly ears of yours, how could I deny you? Very well. Yule, like many ancient practices, has been passed down generations and Interpreted like a game of historic telephone, the specifics start to get hazy, and historians may disagree on certain matters, but there is also plenty to agree upon. I know I don't really have to explain all of that to you, but it's a matter of respect. A way to let those who came before, or the universe, or... Whatever, know that whether your interpretation and practice perfectly mirrors their own or not, you do it honorably, respectfully. I've come to learn that intentions matter so much, and whether or not there is anyone there to feel them, it puts my conscience at ease. Most of my practices include that preface, because in my humble opinion... The moment we begin to tell others who pursue their own truth with an open mind and heart that what they're doing is or is not correct, we're following laws, and this all starts to feel like something I was trying to avoid in the first place. <sighs> I have no issues with anyone's practices, and I support everyone who uses this time of the year to renew and restore their light. We all have our ways, and you being supportive of me and mine means the world to me. And the way you enjoy hearing me talk about the things that interest me makes me feel very, very loved. So let me tell you about Yule, my darling. Light is central to the celebration of Yule. It's winter solstice, the longest night, but marks the coming of the sun. The connection to nature is, for lack of a better term, natural as well. The cold of winter has the earth, or the northern hemisphere at least, shedding its proverbial skin. Life withers a bit, but nourishes what's yet to come. And as we light our fires, and trees, and candles, we know that just around the corner, life begins again. It's beautiful. And 
serves as a time where we can reflect on ourselves, our connections to the people in our lives, and our growth. There's never a bad time to do all of that, of course, but creating purpose and meaning in our lives is how we make sense of all the chaos, right? That, and it's so easy to get caught up in the daily bustle of life, those big things can quickly become afterthoughts. <sighs> well, I'll spare you the finer details of the associated history because, uh, well, I, I think it's a fairly well-established pagan holiday. I'm particularly educated on the plants associated with Yule, but like many of the other details, they've been adopted by other celebrations of the season. <laughs> uh, well, that is a whole other topic. Sometimes I just say I can't really blame anyone for thinking it'd be nice to decorate a tree, right? <laughs> the tree may be the most obvious plant, right next to mistletoe, which at its heart is a symbol of peacemaking. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Norsemen would lay aside their arms if they met beneath a mistletoe. Which begs the question, were there big sexy Vikings making out? Or did that part come later? <laughs> I could certainly think of worse ways to celebrate. <sighs> and of course there's Holly as well. It has long been believed to have protective qualities. Could ward off against malevolent spirits or just ensure your safety in general. That's why wreaths are so popular, because you can incorporate a whole bunch of these plants and make a handy decoration rather than just placing a few twigs and stems all over the place. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? To some, it might just be a festive decoration. It doesn't have to mean anything. It could mean something totally different to another person. So long as they're respectful of me, I'm happy to be respectful of them. <sighs> Our lives are filled with so many twists and turns. We face our challenges, shared or unique to our own situations. I don't feel like I need to be right, or anyone else needs to be wrong. If you're at peace, and you want that same peace for others, I say, we can watch the fire burn, share a toast, and be thankful we have another year ahead of us. And if there are those out there who are less considerate of the world around them, may they find their peace in the coming year and learn to love and live. Or they can get the hell out of my way. Huh? Me? Threatening? Never. Not on Yule. That's silly. We're renewing our hearts and minds. We're taking deep breaths and appreciating the love that we have for each other. Oh. I have no need to be threatening. These things have a way of working themselves out. More plants? Oh, yes. There certainly are. The evergreen tree, specifically, because 
it's evergreen. <laughs> and a constant in a world of life and death has plenty of meaning and inspiration to draw from for obvious reasons. And there's ivy, which has several complementary meanings. The way it continues on when its host has withered away, and the way it bonds to those near to it. We can find meaning all over the world around us. And ultimately, whether it's all that serious or just pretty little ideas to associate with pretty little plants, you take what you need and leave the rest. For me, certainly there's purpose and meaning. This world speaks to me in ways I couldn't have imagined when I was younger. It's filled with beauty, like a love letter written by those that came before and will come after. That's the lesson I've learned. If this world, our lives, are a story, the nature that surrounds us is part of the ink that this cosmic quill of the universe has dipped itself into. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with me when I start to go. <laughs> well, I'm less self-conscious about it now, but... You know, I just don't want to annoy you. Mm. Thank you. For everything. For your kindness. For being such a good listener. For finding it in your heart to love me. There's... There's so much... I could never have imagined experiencing here. The way you've embraced me, you have taught me so much. My little language of Plants 101 pales in comparison to what you've shown me. And I love you. There. Are those ears of yours warm now? Oh. Now it's your lips. Well, that's no good. Do we... Do we need to work on that? <laughs> oh, I know what you need. Thank you, my sunflower.